What's up and welcome back to Rad Potential. Today we've got the E36 in the garage and we are upgrading the cooling system. Upgrading. So last time at the track we cracked the nipple off the coolant expansion tank, overflow tank right here. Lost all the coolant, car overheated. Thankfully, seemingly didn't break anything. Um, but now we are fixing that damage of the track. I'll put in some footage here from that day. However, today we are going to upgrade and fix that. So I debated and went back and forth and um, there's aluminum, uh, like Mishimoto makes an option, someone else makes uh, aluminum options for just the overflow tank, or you can go big baller Zionsville radiator and buy a whole aluminum radiator tank, the whole setup. I decided to do the most budget friendly option that is I don't think a bad choice. So what you'll see here is a factory replacement plastic water tank. You say, well, that's not much of an upgrade, but I will argue that. Um, so as you can see by the box here, I ordered this from FCP Euro. This is an OEM replacement piece. It's not even a BMW one, it's a Miley, whatever correct me. It's a OEM replacement piece. They make good stuff. That coolant tank looks fine. And you know what I can do? Because I bought it from FCP Euro a year from now or beginning of every track season, I can replace that tank and no cost. Send the thing back. It'd be $4 in shipping. And I won't ever have to worry about a failing weld on an aluminum one or something fitting funky because it's an OEM replacement piece. So stay tuned today. We're going to swap that in, get this car back out of the garage and uh, do some nice, cool fall driving with it. Since it doesn't have AC, perfect time to go rip the race car on the street. All right, as you just saw, that literally took 30 seconds and I've got it out. It wasn't the factory service manual way to remove it. Um, but as you can see, I just pulled off the beauty cover, air intake cover thing, um, and then pulled out the cap that holds down the bleeder screw. And then I just fished this thing right out of here, pulled the hose out a little bit. Let me grab a light. Just lifted the tank up a little bit and um, undid that one hose clamp on the bottom of it and then there was this plug right there that I just dropped plugged in for the like water level sensor and now it's over here unscrewed the sensor um, I'll have to transfer that to the new one as well as transfer the caps because the bleeder screw and the other screw or the cap right there and you can see this is what broke on this side of it it's kind of like a metal backed plastic plug snapped right off and you can see it left it in its top hose. So pull that off, swap it back in and we'll be good to go. Obviously, um, if you're doing this with a non-broken cooling system, you'll have to drain the coolant out first. I spilled like a drop because there's a little bit left in that hose, but that's really it since I left all my water um, on the track at NCM. Anyway, um, you can see how crusty and nasty this is. Um, I can't believe, I mean, can't believe it lasted that long. Anyway, most of these hoses have been replaced. I got a new radiator in there now. I think actually all the hoses have been replaced because I replaced a lot of them when I manual swapped it and I had the engine out. I just went ahead and replaced all the hoses I could reach. So we should be dialed and good to go now.
So I'm gonna slap this thing back in there. Uh, we'll warm it up, bleed it, and uh, take it for a test drive, make sure everything's all bled, and we got no leaks, because when it did come loose on the track, hopefully I won't need a new radiator. Uh, let me show you. This hose got sucked into the fan and uh, whacked the radiator some. You can see right there behind the fan. It's a bit chewed up, and there's a bit, a couple more chewed up fins there and along the side. So hopefully that didn't cause any leaks, and we won't have to buy another radiator. Um, but oh well, well, we'll find out here shortly. All right, we've got the uh, M3 drove up on my little wooden blocks to try to raise up the front. Now we're gonna bleed it, um, fill it all the way up till it starts coming out of here consistently. Then we'll uh, let the car warm up, put the cap on. A lot of people say they have trouble with uh, bleeding these things. I treat it like any other old car and I've had not too much issues. Jack the car up, fill it up, let it warm up the temperature. Let the bubbles come out, do it again if needed. Here the end of drinking it. Oh no. Looks like we might have some bad news. Yep, I think it's pissing out of the radiator. Yep, you see that? Uh, oh boy. So I'll see if I can show it here. If I stick the light in. Nope. You can't see really. Oh, right there. Right there. That when that hose got flung around, it sure enough punctured the radiator. So get another radiator on order and we'll finish this up once that shows up. All right, what's up? It's a few days later. Um, as you saw, I just pulled out the old busted radiator and you can see the damage from when that hose got whacked around in there. I think it was only leaking out of this one. We didn't even make it up to this damage. Now that I can see that, I couldn't see that. Any of that when it was in the car, that definitely wasn't gonna work. So same philosophy with the radiator expansion tank. I got a Molly OEM replacement from, you can see the box, where did the box go? There was another box, FCP Euro tape. Same philosophy. So two years from now, I'm gonna set a reminder, or I'm gonna set a reminder on my phone now for, for two years from now to just replace all this stuff again. Um, and that's gonna be uh, my cooling system upgrade. No need to bother with a big metal unit. In this car, I've had it out on 90 degree track days and it hasn't gotten hot on me. So why, why change something that's not broken? Um, this is cheap. That radiator was only 160 bucks plus a $30 expansion tank. So lifetime replacement, totally worth it. So I'm gonna slap the new radiator back in. Um, you can watch me do that and then we will uh, bleed it again and take it out for a spin, make sure everything's sorted and good to go.
All right. All right, new radiators in. Obviously you saw me do a non, probably non BMW approved method. I think you're supposed to pull off the clutch fan and everything to pull that out. But I have found it a little bit easier to just pull the hoses off, push the shroud forward and slide it out. So it's back in. Um, unfortunately, I have realized that I am out of water. I do have one more bottle of coolant on the shelf, but I'm all out of water. So I'm gonna have to go pick up some more water before we can bleed it and make sure I got no leaks. Um, we'll check in. We'll check in then when I do that. All right, we got the new radiator in. As you can see, we got a bunch of water. We're gonna fire this thing up, fill it with water, get the cooling system bled, and then uh, make sure nothing's leaking this time. Um, so I still got it up in the air to keep the top of the radiator propped up a little bit to help it bleed and we'll make sure there's no leaks underneath. As you saw, I might have done a uh, non-BMW approved method of radiator swap, but it works for me. Um, so I don't have to take off the, the clutch fan. I just detach the shroud from the radiator and then slide the radiator out without the hoses. Leave the hoses all in there and it seems to be a qu pretty quick exchange. I've actually done it that way like three times now. And it works just fine. So we're gonna fill it up, get it bled, and then uh, take it for a little test drive. Well, I uh, think that's gonna be it for this one. I don't think we're going on a test drive. It's not, it's coming up to temperature, holding temperature, not overheating, but I may have stumbled upon a bigger issue and we might've caused more damage than we hoped when we uh, lost our expansion tank on the track. She's pretty much up, up, up to temperature now. And uh, if you know the smell, it's a little sweet in here and uh, it's smoking pretty good. It's starting to idle a little crappy. You hear that popping and banging? Anyway, watch this. I don't know if you heard that, but I said, anyway, watch this. Not looking so good. So maybe a head gasket replacement in the future. We'll compression test it in a later date. Maybe S54 swap it, maybe N52 swap it. Who knows? That's a discussion for another day. Thanks for following along with this one and uh, keep it rad.